hello friends welcome you all to another video and today is the last lecture of our syllabus of uh, SYBA American English and today we are going to deal with the themes of the novel the old man and the sea which was written by Ernest Hemingway so what are the themes themes are the fundamental and often universal ideas explore in a literary work and the first theme of the old man and the sea is the honor in struggle defeat and death from the very first paragraph santiago is characterized as someone struggling against defeat he has gone 84 days without catching a fish he will soon pass his own record of 87 days almost as a reminder of santiago's struggle the sail of his skiff resemble the flag of permanent defeat but the old man refused defeat at every turn he resolves to sail out beyond the other fishermen to where the biggest fish promised to be he lands the marlin trying his record of 87 days after a brutal three-day fight and he continues to ward off sharks from stealing his prey even though he knows the battle is useless because Santiago is pitted against the creature of the sea. Some readers choose to view the tale as a chronicle of man's battle against the natural world. But the novella is, more accurately, the story of man's place within nature. Both Santiago and the Marlin display qualities of pride, honor and bravery. And both are subject to the same eternal law. They must kill or to be killed. As Santiago reflects when he watches the very warple fly towards shore, where it will inevitably meet the hawk, the world is filled with predators, and no living thing can escape the inevitable struggle that will lead to its death. Santiago lives according to his own observation. Man is not made for defeat. A man can be destroyed but not defeated. In Hemingway's portrait of the world, death is inevitable, but the best men and animals will nothing less refuse to give in to its power. According to man and fish will struggle to death, just as hungry shark will lay waste to an old man's trophy cache. The novel suggests that it is possible to translate this natural law. In fact, the very inevitability of destruction creates the term that allow a worthy man or beast to translate it. It is precisely through the effort, effort to battle the inevitable that a man can prove himself. Indeed, a man can prove this determination over and over through worthiness of the opponents he chooses, he chooses to face. Santiago finds the Marlin worthy of a fight, just as he once found the great Negro of Sinifigo worthy. His admiration of these opponents brings love and respect into equation with death, and their destruction becomes a point of honor and bravery that confirms Santiago's heroic qualities. One might characterize the equa equation as the working out of the statement because I love you, I have to kill you. Alternately, one might draw a parallel to the poet John Keats and his insistence that beauty can only be comprehended in the moment before death as beauty goes to destruction santiago though destroyed at the end of the novella is never defeated instead he emerges as a hero santiago's struggle does not enable him to change man's place in the world rather it enables him to meet his most dignified destiny number second theme of this novel is pride as the source of greatness and determination Many parallels exist between Santiago and the classic heroes of the ancient world. In addition to exhibiting terrific strength, bravery, and moral certainty, those heroes usually possess a tragic flaw, a quality that, though admirable, leads to their eventual downfall. If pride is Santiago's fatal flaw, he is keenly aware of it. After sharks have destroyed the marlin, the old man apologizes again and again to his worthy opponents. He has ran them both. He considered by sailing beyond the usual boundaries of fisherman. Indeed, his last word on the subject comes when he asks himself the reason 
for his undoing and decide nothing i went out too far while it is certainly true that santigo's 84 day run of bad luck is an affront to his pride as a masterful fisherman and that his attempt to bear out his skills by sailing far into the gulf waters leads to disaster hemingway does not condemn his protagonist for being full of pride on the contrary santiago stands as a proof that the pride motivates men to greatness because the old man acknowledged that the he he killed the mighty marlin largely out of pride and because his capture of the marlin leads in turn to his heroic transitions of defeat pride become the source of santiago's greatest strength without a ferocious sense of pride that battle would never have been fought or more likely it would have been abandoned uh, before the end santiago's pride also motivates his desire to transcend the destructive forces of nature throughout the novel no matter how baleful his circumstances become the old man exhibits an unflagging determination to catch the marlin and bring it to shore when the first shark arrives santiago resorts Uh, is mentioned twice in the space of just a few paragraphs first uh, we are uh, told that the old man was full of resolution but he had little hope then sentences later the narrator says he hid the shark without hope but with resolution the old man meets every challenge with the same unwavering determination he is willing to die in order to bring in the marlin and he is willing to die in order to battle the feeding shark It is this conscious decision to act to fight to never give up that enables Santiago to avoid defeat. Although he returns to Havana without the trophy of his long battle, he returns with the knowledge that he has acquitted himself proudly and manually. Hemingway seems to suggest that victory is not a prerequisite for honor. Instead, glory depends upon one having the pride to see a struggle through to its end, regardless of the outcome. even if the old man had returned with the marlin in tap his moment of glory like the marlin's mate would have been short lived the glory and the honor santiago accords comes not from his battle itself but from his pride and determination to fight so these were the themes and let's uh, move to the motifs of uh, this novel uh, motifs are recurring structures contracts and literary devices that can help to develop and inform the text uh, major themes so first motive of this novel is crucifixion imagery in order to suggest the profoundity of the old man's sacrifice and the glory and derives from it hemingway purposefully likens santiago to christ who according to christian theology gave his life for his greater glory of human kind crucifixion imagery is the most noticeable gave his life for the greater glory of human kind in which uh, hemingway creates the symbolic parallel between santiago and christ when santiago plants uh, are uh, palms are first cut by his fishing line the reader can of help but think of christ suffering his stagmanda later when the shark arrives hemingway portrays the old man as the a crucified martyr saying that he makes a noise similar to that of man having nails driven through his hands furthermore the image of the old man struggling up the hill with his mast across his shoulders recalls christ march towards calvary when the position in the santiago collapses on his bed face down with his arms outstretched the palm of his hand up bring to mind the image of christ suffering on the cross hemingway implies these images in the final pages of the novella in order to link santiago to christ who exemplifies transition by turning loss into gain defeat into triumph and even death into a renewed life number second motive is life from death death is an inevitable force in the novella the one fact that no living creature can escape but death hemingway suggests is never an end in itself in death there is always the possibility of the most vigorous life the reader note that as santiago slays the marlin not only is the old man reinvigorated by the battle but the fish also comes alive with his death in him like the possibility of renewal necessarily follows on the heels of death whereas the marlin's death hints as a type of physical re 
animation that leads to life in less literary ways at other points in the novel. The book's crucifixion imagery emphasizes the cynical connection between life and death, and does Santico's battle with the Marlin. His success at bringing the Marlin in earns him the waved as respect for fishermen who once mocked him and secured him the companionship of Manolin. The apprentice who will carry on Santiago's teachings along after he, the old man has died. Now let's move to the symbols of this novel. Uh, symbols are objects, characters, figures and colors used to represent abstract ideas or concept. So the first symbol of this novel is the Marlin. Magnificent and glorious, the Marlin symbolizes the idle opponent. In a world in which everything kills everything else in some, some way, Santiago feels genuinely lucky to find himself matched against a creature that brings out the best in him, his strength, courage, love and respect. Number second symbol is the lions on the beach. Because Santiago dreams his pleasant dream of the lions at the play on the beaches of Africa three times. The first time is the night before he departs on his three-day fishing expedition. The second occurs when he sleeps on the boat for a few hours in the middle of his struggle with Marlin. And the third takes place at the very end of the book. In fact, the sober promise of the trimp and regeneration with which the novella closes is supported by the final image of the lions. Because Santiago associates the lions with his youth, the dream suggests the circular nature of life. Additionally, because Santiago imagines the lions, fierce predators playing his dream suggests a harmony between the opposing forces, life and death, love and hate, destruction and regeneration of nature. And the last symbol of this novel is the shovel nose shark. The shovel nose shark are little more than moving appetites that thoughtlessly and gracelessly attack the marlin. As opponents of the old man, they stand in bold contrast to the Marlin, which is worthy of Santiago's effort and strength. This symbolizes the embody the destructive laws of the universe and, and attests to the fact that those laws can be translated only when equals fight to the death. Because they are base predictor, Santiago wins no glory from battling with them. So you guys, here we have ended our syllabus and uh, very soon I am going to upload uh, the uh, question bank to you and uh, now we have completed our syllabus so thank you for being us and all the best for your examination